So one of the questions that I get the most about fishing at the Cape Cod Canal is what are the lures that you absolutely have to have? And as you can see behind me, that might be a varied answer, but let's take a look. So I wanted to go over a couple of lures that I always have with me at any time. The first one is a cast master. And it's not just any cast master, it's a four ounce silver cast master and it's canal rigged. So it has that swivel down there in between the bucktail hook and the body. These get pretty, pretty dinged up, but I always carry one with me in my bag. It's a very versatile lure. You can crank it in real fast and skim it across the top. You can work it in the current by letting it drift, pulling the rod back, cranking in the wheel, and you'll actually feel it's swimming in the water because of its shape and its bucktail. And then if the current is light enough and you have a heavy enough uh, cast master, you can jig it essentially lower in the column and work it in that way, but a very versatile lure in the cast master. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to divide up the water in the canal in three groups. Top water, middle of the water column for swimmers, and then the bottom for jigging. And so those three broad groups are what I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna to talk to you about one lure for each of those groups of water. Let's start with the bottom of the water column. Fish in the canal like to hang out at the bottom. It's where a lot of the food that they're foraging is. There are holes where the larger fish will hang out and wait for smaller bait fish to get washed over them along in the current. And so jigging is a very popular technique. A lot of night fishing done at the canal is done with jigs. And these are heavy jigs, three, four, five, six, sometimes more ounces of jig. I'm gonna to talk to you about the one type of jig that I never leave home without. And that is the East End Boss Mac in white. This jig is my all time favorite jig. I caught my biggest fish on this ever. And I've caught my biggest fish each of the last two seasons on this lure since it came out in 2021. A friend of mine, Tyler Martin, uh, developed this specifically for fishing the canal, and he did a great job. It has a stubby nose at the five and a half ounce weight with the body attached. It has a flat bottom, a short stubby nose so it can pull across, it doesn't get hung up too often, a big strong hook on it, and then kind of a fatter, shorter profile with a big paddle tail back here in the back to give it motion. This jig flat out will catch fish. If I had to use one type of jig, this would be it. Obviously I carry this in green mackerel, pink, the sagamore color, pink glow, blue mackerel, a lot of different colors, but the white is my personal favorite. Uh, as an example, just to show you, this is the white one that I caught my largest striped bass ever, 48 inches, on September 25th, 2021, right here. So this one obviously, it got banged up by that big fish uh, and in the process of landing it and safely releasing that large fish, this lure took a beating. So I've retired it. It hangs um, on the wall in my workshop here, not on my active lure wall, but um, I'll always have this as a memento. So again, the white Boss Mac five and a half ounce uh, jig is my go-to jig. I always have at least two of these in my bag at any given time. Oh. There's like 20 guys on right now. The next lure that I'd like to talk about is for top water. And top water fishing, there's something special, there's something romantic about it. It's a lot of fun to be there at the Cape Cod Canal or any place else really and fish that first light, the dawn, the sunrise, and then even last light and sunset, sometimes in the middle of the day, that top water fishing is just a lot of fun. You can see the action unfold in front of you. Uh, it's not like jigging where you're trying to feel it. You can actually see it and feel it. And that makes it a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of top water fishing. And uh, I just wanna talk about my favorite top water lure, my go-to, and that is the all white left eye lure pencil 
with a flat bottom and a seven inch length at three and a half ounces. This lure will cast forever. Be at the three and a half ounce weight and the seven inch profile, it will hit the water and then immediately come up to the top and be there. So you don't have to spend a few cranks trying to work it back up to the surface. It will already be there and start doing its dance for you as you pull it in. It has the one eye, so it's called the left eye. And again, that flat bottom helps it work in the current and staying right on top of the water there where you put it. We have the nice big hooks on there. I'm a big believer in these. I fish them with the two trebles. Um, Aurelio, who puts these together, is a local guy. He's a great plug builder. Each one is handmade individually. He will customize them for you if you want, and they are well worth a very reasonable price. So I highly recommend, again, Aurelio Pabone at Left Eye Lures on Instagram. Check them out. Uh, I buy almost all of my pencils exclusively from Aurelio now because they work. Yes, he's a nice guy. Yes, he's my friend, but I buy them because they work and that's why I use them. So I highly recommend. And what I want to do is I want you to take a look at a little video of uh, me catching a fish on uh, not this exact one because this will be a new one for me in 2023, but this same exact lure, an older version, probably this one right here uh, that I used during uh, 2022 to catch this fish. So let's take a look. So there's top water, there's jigging the bottom, and then there's the middle of the water column. And that's what I'd like to talk about right now. The middle of the water column is an interesting place. And there's one lure that really shines above the rest at the Cape Cod Canal, and that's the Magic Swimmer. Uh, there's a lot of different sizes of Magic Swimmer. There are different manufacturers. So I'm gonna talk about the family of Magic Swimmers, and I'm gonna show you the two that I regularly use. Um, in a minute, I'm going to show you some footage of a striped bass that I caught this past June using a Magic Swimmer. So for the purposes of Magic Swimmers, I'm going to say that there are really two. There's the smaller size of the large ones. This is a 190 Fast Sink. That's the small version for the canal. They have even smaller versions of this lure, but I wouldn't recommend using that at the canal. So this 190, um, I modify it a little bit. I run the one treble underneath and then I put just a little white flag on the back. And so with this profile and with that flag, it works in the water in a very uh, natural way for the fish to attract them as opposed to a solid body plug that might not have the same movement that this could have. We use the one big treble because again, a lot of times the fish will come at that part of the bait. And I really, really like these. I will tell you, they break if you hit them on things. So if you hit bridge abutments, if you hit pilings, they will break. Uh, but again, I always carry a couple of these with me uh, to make sure that I'm ready because a lot of times if the fish aren't hitting on top, if they're not there on the jigs, you can work these lures either in the current, in close to the riprap, anywhere, and they will produce fish. And I'll show you again, like I said, an example of that from this past June on a morning where I couldn't buy a fish. I'd watch my friend Oscar right next to me catch a nice striped bass on a jig. Wasn't getting anything on a jig. There was no top water activity. I kept with it, kept with it, kept with it. And fishing as the tide changed, a magic swimmer in the current, I was able to land a nice slot fish. And for that fish, I used the much larger size magic swimmer. And so again, this was the 190 going up in the, the Sabeel, or now they've been bought out. This is the 228, and this one is a slow sink version. Again, the one big treble on there, but you can see the difference in size as these hang down here. This one is the canal bait and tackle, uh, the heavy version. It has, again, I put the one big treble on there, and then I have the white flag on the back, and this works back and forth. I think these actually come with three treble hooks. Again, I just use the one. Uh, and I really like this one. I've had this for a number of years. I don't know if they still make this pattern. I found one at a yard sale this year. So I, I uh, bought that with a slightly different stripe pattern because I like this lure so much and I was so afraid that if I lost this, I wouldn't have any more. Uh, but highly recommend both the, the Sabeel or whoever it was that bought them out that's, that's uh, packaging those now. And then the canal bait and tackle version. So the video you're gonna see is actually this lure making that catch. 
Uh, it's a big, heavy magic swimmer, so it will work in the current. But again, I like to cast it up the rocks and work it in both with and against the current right off the riprap because a lot of times the striped bass will be tucked in there looking for mackerel that are tucked in. And when you have that going on, this big profile and this movement will really attract those. It's also a little rattle in there that helps. So this, this lure has a lot of things going for it. I almost always have this exact lure with me. A lot of times it's not in my bag because it's so big and heavy, but it'll be in the basket on my bike where I can go grab it or in my backpack um, off to the side, not necessarily in my, my belt bag, if you will. Uh, but again, highly recommend this one. And it's really that movement. So, you know, in looking at this, it really covers, again, if you crank this in really fast, it will stay right up at the surface and it will look like a, a bait fish trying to get away. Or if you let it sink a little bit, it will work in the middle of the water column. So I really am a believer in these. There'll be some days where it seems like all the striped bass want at the canal are magic swimmers. And so it's always good to have at least one of these, whether it's the white, whether it's the blue mackerel, a green mackerel, uh, or a bunker, there's a, a bunch of variations. I have another one back here that's a bunker pattern. Again, this is the smaller size. It's just the profile, right? You wanna have a way to change it up. You know, I, I know I said I'd talk about three and now we're going off script here, but a white or a bone color um, SP minnow is again, another staple of my bag, the big, the 17F, the floating uh, version. But you know, that has a, a solid profile, whereas this, will move around and, and have a different movement in the water. So I highly recommend um, having with you a magic swimmer when you go to the canal, uh, just to have a different profile, a different approach when you're out there. Uh, so the, let's take a look now at this fish. On this day, as I mentioned, I was fishing with my buddy Oscar, that's Oski 7 salt life on Instagram, check him out, he's a really good guy. Uh, we were fishing side by side using the same jigster setup, um, we were both throwing jigs and um, he caught a fish, I didn't. And um, it seemed like it quieted down. There were some other folks that had been catching fish and um, nothing was happening. And so I continued, I worked through my entire plug bag this day. I had probably 20 plugs laying on the ground because I would try it. If it didn't work, I'd rip it off, put it down, grab another one, try it again, change it, go through that. But on, uh, it got to a point where the tide was slowing down and it started to change. Uh, we were fishing an area where now we're kind of on an opposite tide, not how I would generally fish this area. And um, just the stick to it this, I think, is really the credit for this catch. But you'll see the magic swimmer. Uh, it was a beautiful fish and um, really went after that magic swimmer. It was kind of a surprise. It was late in the morning and um, it was a lot of fun. So check out the footage here and uh, let's take a look. Oh, yeah, dude. He needs his GoPro right now. Oh, he's pulling over the drag. Yeah. On the blue. So those are the three lures that again, I highly recommend that you have when you go to the Cape Cod Canal. You can be successful with any number. And these are again, my preferences. You can catch fish with a hook and a chunk of bait. I love doing that. Let's take a look at a fish I caught that way too, just as a bonus. You're gonna be bringing in my line. Let them come up. Wow. Nice fight. That's a keeper. Oh yeah, big guy. That's 35 inches.
All right, so now you've seen it. You can catch fish with bait, you can catch fish with jigs, you can catch fish with swimmers, you can catch fish on top of water. And these are just the lures and the baits that I like to use. There's any number that can be successful. Obviously, these are all on the wall behind me because I've purchased them, I've put them to good use, and judging by the wear on a lot of these, they've been successful. So you can do it. I just wanted to share my favorites with you, uh, but definitely check out East End Lures, Left Eye Lures, and that Magic Swimmer, and I'll say Canal Bait and Tackle because, again, I really like the one I got from Canal Bait and Tackle, uh, the local shop. And so, you know, check those out, and I wish you good luck, tight lines at the canal, and hopefully uh, we'll see you out there this season.